What's happening, Oaks and TV land? How's it going? Alistair France here. I'm with my mate Steve Carroll today. Boys, we're launching Tinley. As you can see, the Butte boat behind there, good old therapy. Boys, a winner boat. Cobra Cat 525 280 Suzuki four strokes. Absolutely brilliant. Guys, just taking you through the Tinley launch. As you can see there, it crunches at the back and then it's got a big trough round about sort of where I'm pointing. You push into that trough. You wait for your gap, you hang right back on the shore here. You can see the mid break, it just reforms and the only thing is really the set to worry about today. With my mate Steve Carroll and my skipper up. today. How are you boys? Myself and Steve are at uh, Jex. We're looking for Garrick. Bait's a bit scarce today, so you know we've thrown some STYX Nomad minnows out the back, which we're gonna sort of pull around on eight meters. The water's looking good. We've only got a short window today, I think what half past nine, Steve, no, maybe. Yeah, Hopefully it stays away longer. I'm going to throw the bucktail uh, on the shallows here, two ounce bucktail, pen slammer 5.5, 30 pound braid and Byron bought up a very good tip yesterday guys, it doesn't matter what braid you've got, it's how thin it is, so make sure you check the diameter, you want it to get down quickly. Yeah, we found a little haven here of bait fish and whatever's down there. Myself and Steve, we found a massive bait ball here in the bush on the floor. So I got the bucktail, I put the bucktail down and got absolutely drilled. Yeah, I knew it. There was something down there, it's been hitting the bait. I did hit it. Very strange. It's not a guarantee. Definitely, I don't have a cooking clue what that is. A big, big rock hard, boys. Guys, this is the STYX minnow. I call it the Starks minnow. It's from Nomad. We've got these two lures on the other side of the boat. One, one on each rod. There's the larger version. As you can see how this has been absolutely annihilated. Now this lure, I would say, what you can tow it up to, Steve. 18 k's an hour. Deadly action. You can see by the more square lip, or should I say diamond lip, what it, it, it does, it gives it a massive side-to-side -side action. Okay. And also what it allows you to do is if you did want to, you can pull it up to, I've done 20 kilometers an hour at the back of my jet ski. I'll tell you what, it's probably one of the best design lures I've ever seen. And it doesn't matter what fish is in the water, it cannot leave this alone. Very, very petite hooks is what I quite enjoy. They very are sharp. very sharp hooks. They, this that comes standard with this, but they're very strong hooks. Um, a lot of the photos from, from summer, the Oaks on Kayaks, they caught cooter on this, but I'm talking 20 plus, 25 plus cooter on this exact lure. I'm using Steve's rods today. He uses the accurate Turn 500 Star Drag reel. Also available from LBT Tackle. Uh, Mick, quality reels, guys. Bulletproof, valiant 8 foot rod. Very, very light rod. Just wanted to show you. That is the silver sardine that caused all the damage. 
see the shape at the top. So we're going to let this out about 30, 35 meters. The boat you can keep it a lot closer because there's no jet wash. Very, very light drag, uh, light feeder. You see how Steve hooks the, hooks the bait through the schnapp or the back. You see the double hook he's using there. Baits away. What have we done now? We've got some live baits. We've got a one ounce sinker. And we've got a slow trawl happening here on a Friday. Hey daddy! Get us out the surf zone, yeah? Oh, you deserve that one. <laughs> one minute you almost die, the next minute you screaming. So, what do you reckon, Steve? Yeah, it's good to be on the fish again, huh? It's been a while. Talk us through what happened there. Well, we were very close on the back line, looking for Garrick on a roof. A little rogue wave nearly broke my head. <laughs> and as that happened, this beast of a fish took off on a proper run. I think it's a nice garret. Yeah, there. there it is. Yeah. Tell you what, that has got a bit of energy in it, man. Um, two five uh, big guns bound back to back uh, thin bait cotton to bind them uh, shrimp tube heat, heat wrap I normally use a green bead because the water is normally green at this time of the year when the garrick are running one and a half meters of 30 pound fluorocarbon leader tied to a swivel and then a one ounce barrel sinker Attached to your leader line just to keep the boat down a bit. Good morning to you chaps. Welcome to a great early morning off Durban Harbour. I've got myself, Alistair, I've got Captain Ron Byron Kane here and I've got our guest Ralph who's on the boat with us today. We're going to go and do a bit of jigging in the deeper marks. You know, we're going to do a bit of drop shot with more the light tackle, see if we can get it down. This is my passion guys, to go to the, the deeper marks and drop those those big jigs down for hopefully what will be around our, our good friend the Amberjack and yeah whatever else we can find. So guys if you do want to ever launch from this area and you don't know, I'm a newbie today, first time I've launched out of the harbour, first time I'm going to be doing bottom fishing and that's what it's about guys, it's about learning. Byron is the master of it and to be with him on the boat learning the bottom fishing and using the KP reels I'm looking at that gadget now and thinking I don't even know what to do with that <laughs> no clue I was going to bring my bicycle wheel with a bolt on the side but Byron said he's got reels so life was good morning guys uh, now we uh, had some weather yesterday it's obviously pretty iffy and it uh, east sucked in and then the west came through last night a little bit of a gap this morning it's looking a little bit better the west seemed to drop at around about two this morning i've dropped down about six so it's about six seven knots now might still be puffing a bit on the outside so it might be a little bit bumpy still on the water but it's uh we're expecting it to drop off by about eight so you know, the conditions should get better um, it looks like there's quite a nice window this morning till about one two o'clock uh, so we're gonna as alistair said we're gonna shoot out here to the wrecks We'll start there and we're going to mix it up there but so we'll do a bit of bottom fishing for Kilbeck on the first night i will do some uh, jigging also drop shotting there as well because that's also the time the ambers will be up so first night for Kilbeck and uh and also for ambers and if we don't come right there then we're going to start heading north and try a couple of spots on the way up there the same sort of tactics fishing on the bottom and uh, doing some drop shotting and jigging at the same time. We'll pick up some live baits on the way up as well. So we're gonna go straight to the deep breaks now in the dock. How's it guys? We're here on Hurricane. God's hand. 
sandbags down there, I think. Um, we've got Ralph here, who got stuck into a decent fish before. Unfortunately, the toothy critters came and gave it a little nibble. So Byron's holding him on the spot here, and we wait in anticipation. We've got our BK that's going down now. It's on the KP. I think we're at about, what, Byron, 55 meters? Yeah, 60, yeah. 60 meters, 64 meters. It's a far way down. Just looking for that up showing just above the reef. It was a bit bigger than that when we arrived here. Yeah? The worry is dissipating now. We've got to pull on the very, very first drift. Lots of red blotches. Not all stuck together. We're just trying to keep us on the mark. So, West is still blowing a bit, so it's pushing us. 10 minutes too late. Does it disappear that quick? Yeah. Because it gets light, you know. Also the sharks in amongst them also can break up the shark. So we're sitting a bit shallower now. We're gonna go catch some live baits. Got a, a Zuri on here, six ounce sinker. I think I've lost my boat sea legs, does he? Is it just me? with this reel, John. What do you think that reel? That thing's fucking... Oh, Iron's setting me up to fail here. Yeah, it's on the team. Chip and I have to fucking achieve. Bring it here. Byron's found us some solid marks, so... Stay tuned, let's see what we can find. Has to be. Three little jigs bouncing like that in a row. Something, Something has to come give it a lick. I'll tell you what, it's been the earliest start I've ever had coming from Belito North there in Tinley Manor. Um, not even the chickens were awake yet. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, these eyes opened. And there we went. Well, we tried. They just don't want to have it. Eh? So, what's the next plan, BK? You want to go and uh, do some bottom fishing? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go find some other locations doing a bit of bottom fishing. Byron will run you through that whole setup. What the target is, different fishing techniques, different hooks, whatever that goes with it. I don't have an absolute cooking. So boys, we got Byron Kane here on a fish, never gives up, boxing on his KP, hard work, something's been drilling him, he went with a different tactic, I lost about four baits in a row over the last hour and a half, but my live boats are getting eaten, but I just couldn't feel it, changed to a full pit trace, smaller hooks, just like the feel. BK! Yo! Oh, that's a beauty. I normally use a Hillbeck trace when I'm fishing on the bottom for uh, for big fish. But um, use a crane swivel. That's just, uh, for me, it helps to keep the line apart. This is the trace that I was using for um, for, for a copper. Um, so what I did was I scaled down, so I shortened up on the leader. So the leader... That length versus normally I'd work on a meter. I think so I was down at about 600. About a 7 or 8 hoodlum. 7 8 hoodlum. Uh, Yamashita glow skirt. That, um, that Just um, extra length of only about 100 to the next, uh, to the next uh, swivel. Then same length to the to the second, the bottom hook. Again, about 600. Same swivel, and then the sinker, just slightly longer. So keeping it near the bottom. And uh, the live bait was on the, this hook here, and that's what the copper ate. 